Hello, my name is Juliette Maris and I'm an integrated body worker. I help active professionals permanently alleviate pain through physical, emotional, and energetic alignment. So today I'm talking about carpal tunnel syndrome because I find that clients are shocked at how I treat carpal tunnel and how effective it is. Um, so my focus in my work is to treat the source of the pain instead of the symptoms. And I find a lot of modern medicine treats the symptoms and doesn't even look at the source. So more times than not, the source is closer to the midline of the body or the core of the body as opposed to where the symptoms actually are. Sometimes it's exactly where you feel the pain, but more times than not, it's not. So my treatment approach is to open up the, the front of the body, the front of the chest, and to strengthen the muscles that support the shoulder blades so that the, the nerve pathway is, um, is freed up. Because when we have this type of posture, the, this is all closed, which leads right to this. So, the first exercise I'm going to teach you is a PNF exercise. So this muscle, this, this exercise, we take the muscle into a stretch, a gentle stretch, and then we engage the muscle, so we use it, and we stay there for a count of eight, and then we release and go a little deeper into the stretch and do it two more times. So this a PNF exercise uses the muscle to work for us to allow for more opening. So what you want to do is find a wall. I'll use my handy brick wall behind me. And um, let's start first um, with the arms straight out to the side. So you want your palm on the wall. And instead of fully locking out the elbow, you can see I'm a little hyperextended. Um, you just want to keep the elbow a slight bit soft. So with the palm on the wall, walk the feet and the torso away from the arm, keeping that elbow soft instead of fully extended. So you should feel a slight stretch. So once that happens, then you can push your palm into the wall for a count of eight, and then relax that push, and then stretch a little deeper. And then repeat two more times. Release and open more, and push, and open more. You can also come up to a 45 degree angle with the hand and open up and repeat that again. So the next exercise I want to show you is an exercise that I learned through another YouTube video. So I will leave the link to that video down below because the woman in the video gives a really great description of what's going on in the exercise. So you're going to need a tennis ball and a yoga block. So the Tennis ball, you want to find your collarbone and feel just below that and there's a little dip, a little nook, and it's perfect for the tennis ball. So the tennis ball goes there just below the collarbone and then the yoga block comes like this. So the yoga block allows um, you to not be push your face to not be smushed up against the wall. Um, so. When you do this, you want the wall to be right here, but if I turn around, you're not gonna be able to see anything that I'm doing. Um, so we're gonna pretend that my hand is the wall. Then you can either start to release here, um, especially if this is a, a really tight or discomfort, an area of discomfort, this is where you wanna start. Um, if you can handle a little bit more, with the, the back arm, you wanna turn the thumb down and bend the elbow behind and rest the hand behind the back. The hand can be lower or higher, it doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure that you're not putting yourself into an intense position and you're listening to your body. So I'm, we're pretending I'm against the wall and uh, I'm gonna push into the, the wall. I like to use a lunge for this um, because I, um, your legs are much stronger than the rest of your body, so I can push more with my legs to get more pressure, to release more. Um, and I can also come off really easily if I'm getting too intense. So you just wanna roll the ball around in this area and find the points that are uncomfortable, and then use the belly breath to release those spots. So 
The next exercise that I would use with someone with carpal tunnel syndrome helps to strengthen all the muscles that support the shoulder blades. So um, you want to, I would sit for this one, and bring your fingers together and your thumbs to the side. And you don't want to do anything funny, you just want to keep everything in the same plane. So you're going to bring your middle fingers together and then just touch your thumbs to your chest. Then relax your shoulders down the back. We don't want the shoulders to be in the ears. And then keeping your thumbs glued to your chest and your middle fingers glued together, you're just going to bring the elbows back a teeny tiny bit. And when you do that, you should feel muscles in the back engage. So you want to stay here, keeping the shoulders away from the ears for 90 seconds. And then if you're ready to go on, you can keep the shoulders where they are and slowly open the elbows. But there may be a point where something starts to shift. So you wanna keep your shoulders in the same place without any shifting. So if this is where you are before the shift happens, this is where you stay for another 90 seconds. If, if you get all the way out, more power to you. That's pretty awesome. Haven't seen it done in a session with a client that has shoulder issues. So then you open up the, when you get to the point where your shoulders are open, your elbows are open, excuse me, then you stay here for 90 seconds and then the last part of the exercise is to keep your shoulder blades where they are and slowly lower the arms down. This seems like a really easy exercise but when you're using your muscles it can be quite challenging. So the idea is, is that you just want to keep the shoulders open and you want to keep the muscles that support the shoulders engaged so that you don't have this posture again. So we opened up everything in the front, we strengthen everything in the back to keep us in the right posture. And so the last thing that you want to address when you have something like carpal tunnel is you want to make sure that your wrist is in good alignment all the time so you're not doing stuff that hurts your body and it actually helps your body. So good alignment means that the the wrist is in alignment this way and that way. So we can deviate, we can move right or left, right? And we can also flex and extend the wrist. Um, so if you're using your mouse and you have a tendency to do like this type of grip on your mouse, you wanna try to have, put maybe put something under your forearm so that you can't, can't do, do this. Um, and also when you're lifting things and when you're doing things and grabbing things, look down and make sure that your your middle finger is in line with the middle of your forearm and if it's not put it there and and put all those things together put both exercises and this oh excuse me all three exercises and this together and you can heal yourself in no time